So your brain is compartmentalized into two different hemispheres. You've got a left hemisphere, and then you've got a right hemisphere. In fact, you can uh, split these. You can split the corpus callosum, and you can have a split brain patient, uh, and they will still function. Uh, with the difference between these two is that on the left side, you go from abstract to specific. So you have a lot of abstract notions which require higher cortical activity. And then from those, you design specific motions, specific plans of action. Your right side actually goes in the other direction. So for example, you have little pixels of light. And from those pixels of light, you design an abstract image. You, you design an image, you infer an image, you infer a movie from the highly specific uh, information you're receiving. So there is a difference in asymmetry here in information processing, and that's also part of the reason why we don't actually have many connections in the first place. So we're kind of already uh, split brain patients already. Uh, they, there aren't many connections, and the connections that we do have mostly are inhibitory. Um, well, the, I mean, there's conflicting evidence on, on that, but. I mean, some people would say most connections that we do have are actually inhibitory, so that the information processing, which goes in this direction, doesn't interfere with this. And um, in Buddhism, for example, you have a meditation practice in which you actually try to uh, stunt this right here, so that you only see the pixels of light and you don't go on to form an image, you don't go on to form a concept, you don't go on to form a movie of it all. Um, and that's supposed to be uh, closer to uh, nirvana than to just constantly make movies and images of the raw data. Uh, so that, that's just an interesting side note. But the reason I bring this up is because whenever we talk about morality, what we do is we bring a certain color to things. We, we bring like a theater light uh, in which we are building this abstract story, a narrative, something to hold together many different pieces and therefore develop specific plans of action and specific emotions. And that's why we uh, have stories and narratives and moralities. That's all it's really about. Well, it's not all it's about, but that's certainly one of the main functions, to narrow our attention into specific plans of action as opposed to others. And so then I see this all in the context of discussing uh, animal consciousness. So my view, uh, which has evolved over time, is that I am increasingly assigning more probability to, to the view that only animals that are capable of having a complex self-model are actually conscious. And there are reasons why I believe that. So here are my view. My view is that you can have a subconscious process, which what we're going to denote it as SC. It's a subconscious process that's going to incite behavior that we can call subconscious pain that we can call subconscious pleasure. So for instance, when a rat uh, goes and, and stimulates a specific part of its brain, uh, and then its hypothalamus, and is constantly coming back to that until it physically dies, because it's just repeating that on loop, uh, we tend to believe, a lot of people, some people tend to believe, that what's causing it is actually the qualia of pleasure, uh, as opposed to just some subconscious process, which we could also call pleasure in some sense, but is not associated with the qualia, with the experience of pleasure itself, which is my view. My view is that you have subconscious events which can trigger behavior and yet not actually trigger the qualia. The qualia comes when you have a complex self-model, a complex self-model, CSM, um, being acted upon 
by something in its past life cone, which became bound to it um, in a computational sense. So there's a binding going on here, but it's, it's in the structure of the computation in 4D space-time, which actually creates that experience. So you need the subconscious stuff affecting the complex self-model. You can't just have this split right here and have this. Just because it elicits behavior, call that actually the qualia. The, the qualia arises when that um, affects this in some way. So this could be pain, this could be pleasure, this could be anything. It could be all the possible experiences that you ever had. What I claim is that the qualia actually exists here. And some people draw the qualia at here and therefore think that all animals are conscious. Uh, lizards, fish, some go as far as insects, anything. Some might even think plants um, because they're, they're sort of not, um, you know, they're going, they're loose, they're loosening uh, the, the constraints more and more and more until they become like panpsychists. But I think there's no reason to assume that these subconscious processings are anything more than subconscious. Um, and, and those are the widely shared ones, by the way. Like, yeah, we all have um, reactions to pain. Lizards do, fish do. That doesn't mean that uh, it's an experience of pain because then that would require this, is my claim. And the reason I believe this is, for example, I can bring up blind sight. So the phenomenon of blind sight is where people claim they have no sight with the same uh, fervor that you claim that you do have sight. So you claim you have the qualia of vision. You are seeing something and you are convinced and I am convinced that I believe you and I believe myself. So I believe in sight. In that with that same conviction, someone who has blind sight says they are blind. They are not seeing anything. But yet the mystery comes when you throw a ball at them. You throw a ball at them and they'll catch it. You put obstacles in their path and they'll move around them. And then you ask them, but you're blind. How did you move around them? And he's like, I just felt like walking in this direction. What do you mean there were obstacles? I'm blind. You know, they, they couldn't have seen obstacles consciously. But yet their eyes were functioning perfectly and there was enough information processing going on in their visual cortex to actually uh, instigate that plan of motion to move around. So consciousness isn't like in everything. Consciousness is like this other thing that requires this self-modeling. And then the experiences, the experience of this is SC pain, this is subconscious pain, which would incite the behavior, that has to actually bind to something which is a complex self-model in some future uh, motions, in some future processes. And these processes can be defined uh, in a tenseless object even. I mean, you could define causal relationships from this to this. It, you don't actually need like the now of Newtonian mechanics sweeping forward and I think that's also part of the confusion, perhaps, that we feel like qualia are uh, sequential, that they must be sequential. Um, so, so that's one thing, is blind sight, I think, is a, is a good argument for it. And, and another argument for it is just memory. I mean, if you think back to your first experiences, whenever you felt pain, whenever you felt pleasure, whenever you felt anything, the very first moments of feeling anything at all, where once you started to recognize that you existed, so in flashes, right? When you were a toddler, when you were a little boy or a little girl, in, in just those moments, you suddenly had a sense of self-awareness and it was then that you learned uh, to bind to pains and to pleasures and so on and therefore create them. Uh, but without that, when you're a baby, like what's there for the pain to bind to? How could it exist on its own uh, without acting on 
some complex self-modeling behavior which requires a big frontal cortex, etc. So if we do require a big frontal cortex for this binding to occur and therefore for qualia to be a sort of emergent property, then um, that implies that chimpanzees are conscious, bottlenose dolphins are conscious, cetaceans in general probably, humans in certain states are conscious, um, but most other animals would, would fall from this, um, from this um, consideration in, in our considerations of valuing things that are conscious. And therefore a lot of people get, um, get triggered by this because they, they're looking at it from a, a moral lens first and foremost. So they wanna be very careful before uh, they, they assume that you actually need, need this. And I totally understand that. Um, but yeah, that's, it's just a difference of views. Do you put your uh, morality, your moral colors first on, or do you put on uh, your other, you know, just your blank truth-seeking uh, mode on? In which case you're going to find, uh, assign different probabilities perhaps to different hypotheses or theories being uh, true with regards to what is conscious and what isn't. Um, and so another thing to, to sort of illustrate this, if you didn't already uh, get this, is that you could have the very similar information processing which is subconscious and triggers like pain behavior, like um, you know, responding to a hot stove without actually having the experience, the qualia of pain, right? And so, but it's going, it, it's the exact same thing. Let's say it's the exact same subconscious process right there, which is SC pain. So it's that which causes you to remove your hand from the stove, SC pain. It's not the qualia of pain. Don't imagine, because this is, this is kind of the problem that you think that SC pain must be qualia stuff. And that's kind of the, the point that I'm trying to make. You could have the reaction of pain and be a robot and, and not, um, not actually feel pain. So this is shared among two different individuals. And then those two different individuals have different um, self models upon which that subconscious pain acts upon. So when it acts upon this one, it's different than when it acts upon this one. And so this guy right here has like, um, is just a badass, or maybe he's meditated for like 50 years in a cave, and the pain doesn't actually cause suffering whatsoever. Uh, so it, it just doesn't, no suffering. No suffering is the qualia which is produced here based on the same pain. So this is a different kind of pain than what happens here, where you have the same subconscious pain stuff, but that affected a different type of self-model, a different type of complex person which has other algorithms evaluating and, and acting upon and binding to something in that past light cone which was that same subconscious pain, but here it produces actual, you know, like pain type of suffering, like suffering pain, which is a different qualia. So the qualia are these things, not uh, this. And so this is a, a very common thing that people think it's the same for everyone. Like you could just isolate this. What you can isolate is this entire thing. And so then this becomes something which we could call real. We could call this a qualia of pain, but it required some sort of uh, effect on a person. It, it required an effect on a person which was predisposed to uh, appropriate this as some kind of suffering and therefore actually create that suffering and experience that. Um, the same is true for anything. Like, for example, this could be, um, you know, a, the same visual input. This is the visual input of Lindsay. 
So this is everything that makes Lindsay Lindsay. It's just that same visual input. But even though I find Lindsay extremely attractive because, you know, I'm just predisposed culturally. I find my, you know, my cognitive algorithms find extreme signaling value in, in seeing other people, uh, uh, you know, seeing me around with the Lindsay and therefore that creates a sensation of aesthetic beauty when I see that same visual input. But when you see Lindsay over here and that affects some other cognitive algorithms that are doing this higher order processing, um, that produces some different qualia in some other person who might just uh, be neutral with regard to this or not find it attractive in any way. So the error is in thinking that we can have uh, this split right here and that this would still be beautiful um, in a standalone fashion, you know, that just the visual input itself as opposed to the visual input acting on very highly specific um, other cortical processes. So that's really the difference uh, between those who believe in animal consciousness extending to the entire uh, kingdom and those who believe that it is an emergent phenomenon.